Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's new features webinar, where we'll be showcasing all of the new and exciting features that we've released this past month. My name is Tali, and I'm a customer experience advocate here at Monday.com. We're just going to give everyone a few minutes to join, and then we will start with an introduction and the agenda for today. While we give everyone a moment to settle in, feel free to share in the chat box below where you are tuning in from and from which industries you're working in. We'd love to know a little bit more about who we are working with today. So I'm based at uh, the Monday headquarters in Tel Aviv. How about you guys? Okay, so Minneapolis, Los Angeles. A lot from the US, UK, awesome. Oh, we have a fellow South African in the crowd as well. Amazing. Okay, so you should all be able to see my screen and hear me. Um, but if that's not the case, then at any point, please let us know by writing in the chat box so that we will be able to get it resolved as quickly as possible. Additionally, if you have to step away at any point during the webinar, don't worry about it. The session will be recorded for you to watch at your leisure. Today's session will be made up of two parts. So first, we'll take a look at our new features, and then we'll move into a live Q&A to answer your questions. My amazing colleagues, Gabby and Sasha, will be helping to answer your questions live during the webinar. Throughout the demo, please be sure to add your questions into the dedicated Q&A box at the bottom of the screen instead of the general chat. We will try to get through as many questions as we can. That said, there are a lot of us today. So if we don't manage to get to your specific question, please feel free to check out our user community at community.monday.com as it's likely that someone else has already asked your question there and has it answered. And finally, you will be emailed a recording of today's session within three business days. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at today's agenda. We have some really exciting updates to cover today. Mainly, we will have an overview of the improved inbox feature, Kanban improvements, a new analytics page for work forms, some exciting new features for docs, including AI, mobile communication improvements, our app of the month, and a whole lot more. With all of that being said, let's jump into my monday.com account to get started. Okay. We're going to start with an exciting improvement for tracking communication on monday.com. So as you can see, we have recently revamped our Monday inbox section, which we're now calling the update feed. This is where you can see posts from all boards and items throughout your account and those you are subscribed to or at mentioned. We heard your feedback that the old layout was a little bit confusing and many users were unsure of the type of information that goes in there or how it's controlled or even how it differs from the notification bell. We therefore took this feedback and we recreated a more user-friendly design to help you gain better understanding and value from the inbox. So what exactly did we do? Well, first we renamed it. It will now be called the update feed. There are also some new inbox settings. These include the option to control which board's updates will appear in the inbox. It also includes the option to remove the automated updates about team members' birthdays and new members joining. And you can see you have the hide options over here. In addition, a highly requested feature, the clear all option was added, which allows you to clear the entire feed for those of you who like to keep things at zero. So you can see over here, mark all updates as red. Um, as a reminder, prior to this change, the inbox could only be cleared per board or one by one, which was a lot more time consuming. So you would click each one like this individually. Um, do note that it's not possible to add new boards to which you are not subscribed or mentioned. And in terms of the mobile app, this new layout is supported, but you cannot control the settings from the app at this time. 
So moving on to another fun communication update over here, you can now easily add emoji reactions to any updates or replies. So this can help better promote team communication and offer a quick way to express support and celebrate accomplishments. So a singe click on the like button will add a like response. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the like button, but as you can see, if you hover on top of it, the emoji window will open and you can correctly choose the emoji that best fits the scenario. So now you can enjoy sharing your feelings with the whole team. Okay, great. So moving on, let's talk about our newest improvements to the Kanban view. One popular feature for managing tasks in a more visual way is the Kanban view. It can be found over here. So if you click on add view, we have a whole lot of views here and you click on Kanban. I've already gone ahead and set one up for you here. So as many of you know, um, Kanban is a useful project management technique that aims to manage work by prioritizing tasks and balancing demands according to available capacity. It helps us see our pain points at a glance and make sure we're best utilizing our resources. This view is another way of viewing the items on your board. It uses cards representing the status of the item, which pulls the information from the status column of your choice. Therefore, your items will be sorted into cards according to their status. Now, up until now, the Kanban view could have a high number of columns in it, but only a few could be presented at any given time. So you can see if I click here and I move this over, you can only view a, view a few of them at a time. As a result, uh, there might be columns here in, in the other areas of the Kanban which have cards in it, but people will not be aware of it. So therefore, we decided to create a navigational widget in the form of a battery that will present the relevant distribution of cards in the Kanban view. So when you click on the battery, it will lead to the relevant column, making it a lot easier to switch between cards. So let's take a look. If we click on the orange, or if we click on the red or the green, you'll see that it really smoothly moves along to the correct column. Um, and you can show the battery over here and take it away if you need. Additionally, you can go ahead and click on the divide by option over here in the settings. Uh, the battery will now be aligned per, uh, per group. So previously, if any swim lanes were empty, it would still appear in the visualization. So for example, if you're looking to divide the group by months, so I've got here August, July, and September. You can see the September's group is empty, but now we've also added in the hide empty groups option. So once you click on it, the empty group will disappear and you'll only see the columns that are filled. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now we're gonna take a quick 30 second break and I will be right back with the next feature. Okay, everyone, I hope that you're all enjoying this so far. So up next, I'm really excited to present the new capability to restore board views if you delete them. So board views allow you to present your board information in multiple different ways in order to analyze and report on it. So you would go over here and click add view. And as you can see, we have a whole lot of views as well as more views over here if you click on it. Up until now, deleting a view was an irreversible action. So although it was visible to see the action from within the activity log, there wasn't an option to reverse the action. We understood from user feedback that sometimes views can be deleted in error and to restore them can be really time consuming. Well, we heard you loud and clear. So introducing the new undo button. So let's do an example. If we go ahead and we delete the Kanban view, we can now go into our board activity and you will see right now, the view is deleted. We've added in this undo feature. So as soon as you click undo, the board view will, will come back to your board. And now, out of this, the Kanban has been brought back 
And if we go back to the activity log, you'll see that the undo option is now grayed out. Currently, this feature is not available to all accounts, but it is in slow release. So if you don't see this yet as an option on your own personal account, don't worry about it. It is coming soon. Okay, next, I'd love to introduce you all to a really big and exciting feature, the new form analytics page of WorkForms. But before we dive into that, let's take a step back for a moment and explain what WorkForms are in case anyone in our audience today is not familiar with this amazing feature. So WorkForms are a way to bring new data into our Monday.com boards from outside of our account or from people within the account. Using a form ensures that when creating a new item on your board, the columns are populated via questions on the form, so all of the data comes in seamlessly. If you haven't used forms before, I definitely recommend checking them out. So let's do a quick example. So you would go over here and click on form. And as you can see, I've already created a form here. So let's do a quick test run. So let's see if we have any names in the audience. Um, okay, no first name. So let's just take Sasha, who's with us today. So Sasha, she's into real estate. The date is the 23rd of August. And her favorite uh, ice cream flavor is dark chocolate. And she is 28 years old. You hit submit. And boom, Sasha and all her information has been put into our board. So now we want to introduce the new forms analytics page. So let's take a look. If we go into forms, edit form. This is where all the customization happens. And we go into the analyze. So the, this is commonly used for industries who are using Monday work forms for collecting larger amounts of data such as feedback surveys, internal or external requests, lead generation campaigns for marketing and sales, and project management. So up until today, it was a little challenging to get a clear overview of your form submissions. This includes things like total submissions, the submission rate, time completion rate, geolocation, etc. Now, this feature enables form owners to gain insightful analytics regarding their forms, such as a submission rate, the average submitted submission time, a split by geolocation, browser, device, et cetera. So this is a really great way for form owners to understand how their forms are used, identify improvement areas, and make better data-driven decisions. So there are now three ways to analyze your form submissions. So the first thing we have is a summary, which is pretty self-explanatory. You have all the information, we see industry, and all the data from our board. Then you have the response, the table of responses. So this is the table from our board. And now we have the new analytics page. So over here, you can see the submission overview, the total amount, how many came in, the completion rate, and how much time it took. And by per location, as well as the device, whether it came in via browser, desktop, mobile app, et cetera. This feature certainly adds more value to the work forms. And this is the first phase of the improvements that we've launched, but there are still many more enhancements to come. So stay tuned. And again, if anyone has any questions or wants to share their thoughts with us, please do so. You can comment in the chat box below or send through some questions to the Q&A box. So that we'll be sure to cover as many of them as possible. So that's it about the work forms. We're gonna take another 30 second break to sip a glass of water and we'll be right back with you. Okay, thanks for staying with me, guys. I hope that you're excited to hear about the next feature. So let's head back to our main table. And I'd like to introduce you to an exciting new development to our Monday experience. 
the Monday AI Assistant within Monday Docs. Now, in case you've not used WorkDocs before, let's first touch on what is a WorkDoc. Let's think of it as a flexible multimedia whiteboard where you and your team can record all notes and ideas related to one central topic. By adding individual elements to your WorkDoc, all your loose thoughts and ideas can come together in one place right inside of Monday.com where all the rest of your work is stored. WorkDocs allows you to collaborate with all your team members in a smooth and effective way. You can add a new WorkDoc just as you would add a new board or a dashboard. So we'll go over here, click New Doc, Sally's New Doc. And as you can see, you have the option to make it a main, private, or shareable like you do with boards. Create Doc. Now, a few words on Monday AI. Monday AI, AI is the incorporation of artificial intelligence technology into the Monday.com platform. Monday.com is built to be at the core of every type of work where customers can build workflows that suit their every need. And to further realize that purpose, we've recently launched a beta version of the Monday AI Assistant. This tool will expand how you interact with and build on the monday.com work OS platform. Now let's take a look at how we can use this tool to help make our lives easier when using WorkDocs and create content in a few seconds. So with the AI assistant in the Monday doc, you will see that we have three functionalities, creating a template, composing a text and summarizing a text. So let's go into each one of these and I'll show you how it works. So the first one, start with AI. When you click this, you can generate a template. So for example, you have a prompt here of a couple of things. So let's say a vacation plan. Generate. And in just a few seconds, the AI assistant will create a template for you that you can edit and use for your team or use at a later stage. Here we go. Pretty cool, right? Another ability that we have is to actually compose a text. So you would go ahead and click on AI Assistant on the top, write with AI. And for this example, we're gonna say, maybe we want AI to write me five tips on how to best manage my time. Click generate and let's see what happens. Amazing. In just a few seconds, we have an entire paragraph here with five points on how to manage our time. Of course, you can edit it and then click Add to Doc. Now, perhaps this is a little bit too long and you want to break it up into something a little smaller. So we will just go ahead, highlight the text, click on the AI Assistant, and it's going to go ahead and summarize this into just three lines. Look at that. Now, as we explore more and more, it is important to keep in mind that the Monday AI Assistant is still in beta. So from the nature of AI, there might be inaccurate information and will not always be perfect. We are still scratching the surface with the Monday AI Assistant, and the more we use it, the smarter it will become. We cannot wait to see how it will continue to evolve over time and become a game changer for your team's efficiency and productivity. Really, really exciting stuff is just around the corner. And I'm glad that you're all here with me with front row seats on the journey ahead of us. And while we're here, I wanted to show you how we've added another level of customization to the WorkDoc. And that is the WorkDoc's custom photo. So up until today, you could add cover photos to your docs, but only from the bank of photo resources that we provided. Many of our WorkDocs users wanted the option to customize their docs and create a look and feel that suits their brand. So now we have added this feature allowing you to upload your own custom photo. How do you do that? So to set your cover photo, just hover over the docs title and click add cover. And here you will have a list of options. So we'll say upload image and we're gonna choose this beautiful photo of the sunset on the beach. And that goes really well with my vacation planning. So this really adds a fun personal touch to the doc. I encourage all of you to head over to your accounts after this demo and test it out and let us know what you think. 
Great. So just to keep you on your toes, please can you send me an emoji in the chat if you're still with me before we continue and maybe a word or two on how you guys are feeling and what you think of the features up until now. Incredible. Thank you all so much. This is really, really exciting. Okay, so let's go back to my board. Up next, we are going to be moving over to the Monday Apps Marketplace to take a look at one of our apps for this month. So with the Apps Marketplace, you can find ready-made apps to expand the capabilities of the monday.com platform and fit the unique needs of your business's workflows, processes, and projects. The Apps Marketplace contains apps developed by third-party developers, as well as apps built by the Monday team using the Apps Framework. By using Monday Apps, you can analyze and visualize your data in new ways and collaborate more effectively across your organization. So let's take a look. So we'll go over here to this little puzzle piece, and this is the Apps Marketplace. And as you can see, we have apps that are featured, trending this week, some bestsellers, and even the editor's choice. Now let's deep dive into one app in our marketplace. And the app of the month is GetSign. Here it is. So the GetSign app is a fast and secure way to sign PDF contracts, agreements, consent forms, and much more. GetSign is the first fully integrated document generating eSign solution for Monday.com. With GetSign, you can create, send, sign, and store legal binding documents all in one place. You can create a board for any eSign process and customize it with unique fields, integrations, and automations. And if you need to initiate a document signing using a form, GetSign has you covered. So let's go over some of the highlights. Um, it has an easy trigger, um, eSign workflows using automations, easy drag and drop template creator, fully integrated with Monday, no code or API integrations needed, and you can really work without ever leaving Monday.com. Now, some popular use cases um, include sales teams working with external clients, legal teams, real estate, HR onboarding companies who think about it, they need to send out contracts for new hires. So this is a really great tool for them. And I'm sure that there are a lot more, but these are just a few examples of the industries who could benefit from the app. So now I'd like to show you a quick video on how this works. But let's take a look. Okay, let's 
just minimize this for a second. Okay. So I wasn't walking you through that. That was just a video. Um, so I hope you could all see the screen and just get a little insight into how this um, app works. So this is definitely a wonderful application that aligns with the gap that our users have been wanting. And I've personally heard from plenty of users who were really keen for this ability within Monday.com. And I'm glad that this app can make it possible. So if you have any questions regarding the app, please head over to the app's marketplace and find the app's page and reach out to the app's developers directly by clicking on the button. So let me just show you what that looks like. Um, we go back to the app's marketplace. And again, we type in get sign. And then you can click here. In terms of payment, um, that you can discuss with the app's developers themselves. Some apps are free, some you pay for. Um, and if you go down, you will see here contact developer. And these are third party apps, so you can definitely contact the developers for any questions that you have. Okay, um, our last section for today before the Q&A part of the webinar is a little bit about our mobile features. So let's go back here. Sorry, one second. Okay. Great. So for those of you who don't know, Monday.com offers mobile apps on both iOS and Android. And almost all of the capabilities that you have in your desktop and Monday platform are available on the mobile app. But we are always looking to improve the experience for our mobile users. So the first thing we did that I wanted to show you guys is our notifications list tab, which is the second most viewable tab in the app. We've now implemented some UI improvements in the notification tab in order to utilize it to be cleaner and clearer. So you can kind of see here, this is before, um, quite full, a lot of text and quite heavy when you look at it versus the after where we've cleaned it up and it's a lot easier to understand what's going on. And another little addition that we did was to add in the emojis. So again, you can click on this to like it or hover over it like you would in the desktop or platform. Um, and pick the emoji of your choice. Okay, and the last thing I wanted to share with you um, is the new version of our What's New page that's found in the desktop app. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So over here, you'll be able to see exactly what is going on, discover the latest feature releases, improvements and updates on both the web, desktop and mobile app. So a lot of this we discussed today. And as you scroll through, you can see we spoke about emojis. Um, there's some of the AI stuff um, and all of the, the latest improvements. In addition, um, you can always check out the highlights from the Marketplace app. Um, you can see here again what's new, what's recommended and trending. And lastly, I wanted to show you, we've got this new timeline feature where you can view all of the updates um, and releases in a timeline view with dates and see exactly what's new and when it was released um, and go ahead and watch all the information over here. So that's really, really useful. And again, this is found on the desktop app and the mobile app. So you can always keep up to date with what's going on on Monday. Okay, um, so this completes the new features uh, presentation, the first part of our session. We're going to be moving on to the Q&A shortly. So if you haven't had a chance, please be sure to add your questions to the Q&A box and not in the chat. We're going to take a quick five minute break um, just to gather your questions and we'll be right back to get started. Um, so now it is 6.31 in my time. So we'll be back here at uh, 6.30. Six, six, thirty-seven, and we'll get ready for your questions. Back in another two minutes, uh, we're just wrapping up um, your questions, and we're going to be addressing them very shortly. So we'll be back in just two minutes to continue. Everyone, thank you so much.
We are now going to head into the second part of this webinar, and we're going to go through some of the questions that were asked. Thank you so much for everyone's participation. Um, again, if you have any questions, send them through to the Q&A box. Um, so we're going to go through one by one. I will hopefully get through as many questions as I can. Okay, so the first person asked, um, how do you embed a board into a work doc? Great question. Thank you so much for asking. So if we go back down to our doc, then we have this little plus sign over here and you can add content. So if we add this and we say more options, you can see that here we've got um, boards and widgets. So you can embed a board or a widget. So let's see, we have here Tally's Tasks August. So this was the board that we had. We we'll click on it and straight away the board is embedded over here. Uh, not only that, but any changes that you make um, from the widget or from the table will be directly changed on the board. Um, in addition, say you're working on this and you want to maybe tag someone in your team to have a quick look, you would just add mention, um, you know, tag them over here like you would. One second. There we go. Um, you know, what do you think? And collaborate easily from one place. Great question. I um, hope that that answers it for you. Let's see what else we have. Okay, somebody asked here, how do I make a change uh, to more than one item at a time? Okay, amazing question. So as you all know, at Monday.com, we're big fans of uh, being efficient. Um, so if you have to change all of these um, statuses, or say the date, um, and you don't want to manually go in and pick each of them, you can just use what we call batch actions. So for example, either click on each individual one that you want to change and change the status like this. So all these three change to marketing. But if you wanted to do the whole group, then you would just click on the very first one. It will highlight all of the items. And then for example, we can batch action the dates. Now they're all March 9th and you can do this with, of course, um, every column. Great question. Thank you so much. Let's see what else. Okay, so we have a question here. I don't see the AI assistant. Where can I find it? Okay, so as I mentioned, this is um, a new release. So some of you might not be seeing this on your account. For those of you who don't have it, uh, what you will do is you need to actually activate it within Monday Labs. So you're going to go to your admin section and you will go to Monday Labs. And here you will just type in AI. So I've already activ activated it. But for you, um, you'll see something like this where it says activate. And all you do is click activate, um, exit. Your page will automatically refresh. Um, and then you should be able to see the AI assistant on your board as well as uh, from within the doc. So for those of you who don't have it, definitely go turn it on and uh, start using it and let us know your feedback. All right, let's take another question. Um, is it possible to share a project with a guest? If so, how do I do that? Amazing question. So as you know, a lot of us work with uh, external you know, vendors, clients, people that are not members of our account. Um, so first of all, remember that we have three board types. We have a main board, a private board, and a shareable board. So um, you can only invite guests who are external from your company um, to shareable boards. So you can either change a board that you've already got, change board time, and you would change it to shareable. Or if this is a new board, then when you create it, um, you would just say new board, and you would create it as a shareable board, which tells you here that it will be um, shareable. And then um, you'll go to the top here where it says invite members. And if this is um, not someone who's on your account, you would just add in their email address click invite and they will get a link to the email address where they'll have to sign up and they will only be able to view the board that you invite them to. So this is super important because we want to, you know, remain private and protect your privacy. So even if somebody's invited to a shareable board, uh, they won't be able to see any other boards or access anything else in your account. It will only be the specific board that you are working with them on. So I hope that that answers your question. Um, if not, or you have more questions, please let us know. And let's take a look at another one.
Okay, so we have a question here. Is it possible to mute notifications just from a certain board? Amazing question. Thank you so much. So yes, um, if you go up over here to your board settings, no, not board settings, board notifications, you will see a whole lot of different options for this specific board. So you can mute all notifications, you know, receive notifications only for mentions and assigns or everything. And in addition to that, um, you can also mute all notifications from this board for all the board members. So if you want to do that, you're the board owner, you would just mute it um, or unmute, and you can control the settings directly from the board itself. Excellent question. Okay, let's see what else. Um, okay, this is regarding the GetSign app that we discussed in the first part. So do you have to pay for GetSign? So this is a paid app, um, but you can find, you, you can first trial it if you want to. Um, you can also see the pricing within the, the app's marketplace. So again, just to go over it for anyone who might have missed, the app's marketplace is located over here. Uh, you can browse by category or find the features, the apps, sorry, that are trending this week or bestsellers. Um, and when you go into it, you'll be able to see all the information about the app itself. Um, this includes pricing uh, and you can contact the developer because we don't support um, the actual setting up or any issues to do with a specific app since it wasn't created by the Monday team. So we have partners over like this one at Sputnik. You could always reach out to them um, and they will be able to assist you. And you can see for this one, it's got a free plan available. So there's always that option. Okay, let's take a couple more questions. Okay, so somebody asked here, what happens to my information if I delete or archive it? Can I get it back? So yes, definitely we all know that uh, mistakes can happen, information can be deleted, maybe on purpose or by mistake. Um, if that happens, not to worry. Uh, we have a trash folder, let's show you. We have a bin and archiving. So there's two different options. So if we go ahead, um, you can see here we have archive or delete. So deleting an item, um, it will be deleted for 30 days where you can restore it within the 30 day period. After that, it will be gone from the platform. And we also have an archive, which is also really nice um, just to kind of keep your boards clean. Uh, you can also include this, autom like automations can also automatically archive information. So whether you archive or delete information, let's do one of each. Now you realize, okay, you wanna undo it, but you don't hit the undo button in time. Not to worry, just go over here and you will be able to view both the trash and archive. And then here, yeah, I, I had uh, deleted Alex. So you can see here, restore or permanently delete. And we can just, without going out and back in through the admin section, we have a really quick little switch over to the archives and we can bring Tamir back as well either by clicking on it and clicking restore or through the three dots under action and it's restored to your board. So that's really great. So no need to panic if anything is deleted or archived from the board, you can always bring it back. All right. Let's see. Okay, so somebody asked here, uh, this is a really good question. How can I change the settings of all the notifications I receive? For example, if I don't want to get an email notification for updates on an item. Okay, amazing. So we definitely don't want you to get bombarded with too many notifications. Um, so you can always customize your um, notifications, again, through your personal profile. So each person can go to my profile. And over here, you'll see that there's a notifications tab. And here you can manage all of the notification settings. So we have for the desktop, for email, um, I've integrated with Slack, um, and there's also from within your Monday account. So for each of these, for example, email notifications, 
um, I've turned off a lot of the email notifications. Now, this doesn't mean that you will not get notified. It just means that you won't get an email um, that notifies you that you have been assigned to an item or et cetera. It will only come up through a bell notification. So um, you can go ahead and um, check these or uncheck these to make sure that you're only getting the notification emails that you want. And again, you can do this again for Slack and for within Monday. So that's a really good question. Thank you. All right, let's see what else. Okay, so somebody's asking here about automations. Amazing. Uh, how do I set up my own customized automations? All right, so we'll just touch on this briefly. Um, so you can go ahead and click on the automations icon over here. And you can browse through either through category. Um, so this is based on status changes. These are recurring tasks, uh, sub items, et cetera. Um, if you click on each one, you'll see that we have pre-made templates. So these are recipes uh, with, an, with a trigger and an action, and these are built in. So you can't make any changes to these per se. However, if you wanted to create your own one, you would just go to cr uh, create custom automation. And we can do an example. Maybe there's some people in the crowd who are not so familiar. So for example, um, we want that when the status changes to something, so this is the trigger, then a certain action will happen. Maybe we will move the item to another group. So we'll click on when the status changes to, when the industry status changes to um, real estate, then maybe we have a group on our board called real estate. But for this example, we want them to go to September, create automation. Now, if I go ahead and I take Alex, and I change this to real estate, this item will automatically be moved down to September. So this is a great way to just automate things across your entire account. So no need for manual moving, dragging, dropping, and creating items around your account. It will just happen really fast. Okay, let's see what else we have. Okay, so somebody asked here about the AI um, assistant. Can AI summarize board data rather than the doc text? Um, so the answer is not yet. Currently, the board AI can be used as a task generator only. Um, but as I mentioned also um, in the first part, that we're only you know, touching on the capabilities of the AI assistant. It's still in beta, so we are collecting your feedback. Um, and at the moment, that's not possible, but definitely look out for new improvements as they come because this will get a lot more sophisticated and complex. Um, and we're really excited to see what the AI assistants will be able to do. Okay, so um, somebody asked here, how do I change the board to be private or shareable, like you mentioned before? Um, and what is the difference between the board types? Okay, so happy to go through this again. Um, so we have three board types um, within monday.com. We have a main board. So let's open it up again. A main board. So this is a main board on your account with no privacy settings, and it's visible to anyone on your account. You don't have to be invited to this board. It will just be there if you search for the board name or you see it over here on the side. Um, a private board is, you can see, um, for working privately um, or alone with selected team members. So say I have a board that is to do with people's salary, um, and I only want um, specific members of the HR team to be invited to this board because it has some sensitive information. I would create or change my board to be private, and only the members, uh, the team members that I invite to this board um, over here, like I showed you before, they will be able to see this. Um, nobody else in the account will be able to see it or access the information. Um, so that's a really great feature. And a shareable board, as we mentioned before, is when you want to collaborate with people outside of your, your organization. So if I'm hosting a birthday party and I'm working with, uh, with vendors and I have someone coming to do um, face painting, someone who's going to be making food, and I'm trying to organize on my board, 
um, you know, when everyone's coming, how many people, and I'm trying to communicate with these vendors. Now, they're not a part of my organization, but I do need to share information with them. So I will make my board into a shareable board. I will invite them through their email. And then the vendor will be able to log in and only be able to see this board. Um, and again, um, you can change the settings um, to make maybe some things only specifically available to them. Um, but it's pretty much a way to collaborate with people outside of your organization. So I hope that that answers your question. Okay, so we have time for maybe another two questions. Okay. Okay, so somebody asked here, um, is there a way to block certain people from seeing column information? Yeah, so we do have um, that ability. We have um, column permissions. So if I'm not mistaken, this could be only available from our pro plan and above. Um, but in any case, if you do have the setting, you would go, say for example, I don't want people to see maybe how old certain people are. Some people are sensitive about that information. So we could go here, um, settings, and we will restrict uh, column view. Now this um, shows you who can view this column. So it's not that it um, blocks it immediately, and you have to type in the person's name um, who can view it. So, sorry, it will block it for everyone. And say I only want uh, Ross and Rachel to be able to view this. Um, I'll have to manually add in those specific people. Um, and then the column you can see has a little eye. So it will be a hidden column. So that's a great way also to, um, you know, add another layer, layer of privacy to your board. Okay, great. We have a lot of amazing questions here. I'm going to try and get through as many as I can. But again, if we don't get through and answer your specific question, uh, please feel free to reach out to our support team. So we have a question here about uh, my work. So what is the my work section and can I change the structure of it? Amazing. So let's go and have a look at our my work section, which is over here on the left hand side. Okay. Wait for it to load. Um, so my work is a really nice um, overview of all the items um, that are assigned to you or specific members um, of your team. Um, and it will be displayed here for the dates that are related to today, this week, and next week. Um, so let's maybe see if we can pull in some information from today. So let's just batch action this and move it to today's date. Then you'll see here in my work, oh, but I, so yeah, you actually have to assign this to yourself. So let's go back and do that. Um, we need to add in a people column and we'll just assign these to some people on my account. And if you don't assign somebody, then it's not going to pull up the information um, in the my work section. So that's really important. So there, we've assigned a couple of people some tasks. Now, if you go to my work, uh, we will see, just refresh. Okay. So we'll be able to see tasks um, that are assigned to you. Now, um, these are the past dates, but what you can do is go into the customize section um, and customize what you want to see. So whose items should we show? So maybe we only want to show certain people. And we can also choose specific boards. So let's find um, here, Tally's tasks. Anyway, you can go ahead and pick whatever board. It doesn't you know, matter for this example. Um, you can also choose the date. You can customize it um, according to the um, settings over here. Um, and then you'll be able to pull up information. Maybe you want to see specific team members, you know, how many tasks are due today, how many are next week. And it's just a really great overview um, of all the tasks throughout the account instead of going into each board individually. 
Amazing question. Thank you so much. Okay, so we only have uh, a couple of minutes remaining. So I think we're gonna go through one more question. Um, and this is a common question that we get. Um, so I'm really excited to go through it with you guys quick. Um, so this is, how do I create a dashboard uh, with information from multiple boards? So with the last two minutes remaining, um, I wanted to show you how you can create a dashboard. So we will create over here as you would for a new doc or a board, create a dashboard, Ali's dashboard. And again, you have the option to make it private or main. So let's make it, we'll keep it main for now. Create a dashboard. Now we can connect um, for different plan tiers. You can connect different amounts of boards to a dashboard. So let's go ahead and click um, maybe just a couple of these and click done. Now uh, you can see over here, we have chosen to connect three boards. Um, and we want to know how, how you want to visualize your data. So again, it's not going to be in a board view. Uh, we can choose any one of these awesome widgets or go to the widget center. So for example, um, a battery. Um, and you can go ahead and, and you know, add as many widgets as you can um, and customize it, make it bigger or smaller. Um, and you can always go into the settings. Um, and play around with it to decide, you know, what information you want to display um, and change it up as needed. So I think with that, we are going to end. Um, I want to thank everyone so much for tuning in today, for taking um, a half hour or an hour out of your day to learn more about the features of Monday.com. I had the best time um, speaking with you guys and sharing what we have uh, upcoming for this month. Um, so thank you all so, so much for joining and we hope to see you again for next month's um, webinar and have a great rest of your day wherever you are logging in from.